hi guys so we got a new event called the scorch project this is kind of like deity's test so if you have any additions corrections or suggestions to this video you can drop them down below as i'm also just learning this as well but yeah a few things i have learned so far from the event now just like deity's test has the stages from stage one upwards scorch project has the challenge difficulties from difficulty i and i think the maximum or highest i have seen is difficulty nine to start the event you select challenge that will help you begin the difficulty of your choice if you're just starting the event you will need to start from difficulty one of course after completing each difficulty you will receive a reward now the best rewards i've noticed apart from the avatars and stuff are from difficulty five and difficulty seven which both give you draconics passive draconics and useful draconics that are both good for pve and this event as well so now that we've understood the rewards you can get from this event, I'll try to explain everything I've learned and understand about the Scorch project till date. The first thing to note about this event will be it's kind of like dungeons but randomized. When I say randomized, I mean the monsters and the dungeon itself. The dungeon itself can look like the level 140's blue sea, but the monsters there can be either the spiders from Dragon Slayer, the tree monsters from somewhere else, and they are even this mage that I'm not sure, I think they are maybe level 160 or 170's dungeon. It's crazy! Another important thing to note is your stats is actually reduced or slashed once you enter this event and it actually gets reduced more the further you progress in the event so rating actually matters don't get this wrong rating actually matters so the whales and stuff will go further in this event still that doesn't mean strategy doesn't matter because strategy still helps you figuring out what monster to kill first can actually make a difference in you clearing this dungeon or losing there is a leadership board which gives you i think by the end of the week every monday this reset so you have to actually clear this again to be on the leader's board after completing a dungeon the raid function will be unlocked for you that means after completing difficulty i or ii by next week when i try to challenge this again when everything resets i will be able to use the raid function which automatically completes the dungeon for me i don't have to go through the stress of fighting the entire dungeon again it is also important to note that with the raid function you still pick up buffs when using this a very important concept in this event is there are items called buffs that you can gain from killing some demi bosses or actual bosses in this event they drop this is like a cube and stuff when you collect this be careful because every buff is important and they can help you now there are very good buffs and there are some buffs that can actually be replaced by other buffs what i mean by this is let's say you get con eye or so you will want to get con eye eye next if you get another con eye it will just replace the previous one and you won't actually get any benefit but also there are some buffs you should avoid and an example of this is death nail this is the most this is the most annoying buff i think you should not have especially if you're not strong enough because it actually zaps your health each time you deal damage in an event that you're already at a disadvantage with stats and the monsters deal so much damage so you don't want to use this unless you are using a class like the assassin and even still i don't think it's a good idea to use this buff so definitely avoid this death nail of a buff it's a double-edged sword to be honest there are certain classes that excel in this event based on my experience and the first class out of them all that does the best in this event is the assassin it has the most survivability in this event as it has the crystal coffin to dodge damage and gain health it also has the void ex that can also dodge damage make it immune to damage and give it some health let's not forget the aoe damage and control ability it has also the buffs and debuffs it can give to its opponent and itself and also the insane damage the melee status or the melee mode of the assassins can deal just makes it an overall perfect class for this event the only problem or issue with using the assassin is you might take a little longer especially if you are not meant or you don't have the strength to complete a dungeon but after using the other classes where i failed using the illusionist the floramancer the phantom sound and other classes the assassin actually succeeded Another very good class for this event is the Flora Mancer. It has the control ability and insane damage. Control ability being with the vine field, as long as you can put your vines and just put different flowers on the ground, make sure you guide the monsters to these flowers. They can get stunned and 
stand still in their flowers. This is what separates the floral monster from the illusionist as the illusionist cage can't really keep the monsters at bay from you. Meanwhile, the floral monster can do this quite perfectly. Controllability aside, the insane damage of its mother ravels to you and divine weep they are insane. This class is very good for clearing this event, although you will still not go as far as the assassin, in my opinion. The next class is the illusionist. Although it lacks the controllability of the Floromancer and assassin, it more than makes up for this with the insane damage it can deal and also the freezing ability of its skills. So if you do get the right buffs and you, and you play your cards right, you can actually use the illusionist and clear or go far in this event. Now for the phantom sound, I haven't really used it yet but it's healing, it's shields and the massive damage should assist plus it has a nice talent that, that can actually basically give it another or a second light and it is the only class except the blade masters to have this and now I have made a video about using this second light strategy and build I will link that in the description and in the comment section so you can check that out to know how to use this properly. Fighters are a nice class, but I don't really think they will go that far in this event. I mean, the tank and stuff can give you a second life and it does have a nice damage. But the fact that it has to fight at close range gives it a disadvantage that the Blade Masters and Skateboarders also have. So I don't think these classes are that good for this event. Now the Soul Dancers, although being a magic class, I don't really think they can go that far in this event except you really are strong or you really come up with a very good strategy. I don't think you should use Soul Dancers for this. Finally, we have the Gunslingers and the Gunslingers have an insane damage output that can actually destroy and mow their opponents. But the problem is they are glass cannons. What I mean by this is the Gunslingers don't really have any survivability skills. I mean, they do have the damage reduction abilities and stuff, but they just can't really take hits as much as or as well as the Assassins, the Floromancers, or heck, even the Illusionists can take more hits than the Gunslingers most times. Reapers are good for a lot of things, like honestly. But the problem with this is being a jack of all doesn't really make you a master of them all. Now, the problem the Reapers have in this event is they don't have enough damage, they don't really have heals. Now, they do have the ability to remove the damage or undo the damage they receive. But the problem with this skill is it has a long cooldown. And as we all know, the Reapers' skills are not affected by CDR. Here are some monsters and things to take note of in this event. The first and most annoying monster of them all are the mages. Whatever mages they are, please focus on them and kill them immediately they spawn or these monsters will ruin your run. They can literally take away at least one of your health if you're not careful. Next will be the water or ice sprites. Uh, going, just go a distance away from these monsters will make them unable to attack you. So when they spawn, just go away from them. Lure the other monsters you want to kill away from them. This is what separates or makes this monster not as annoying as the mages. The mages will follow you wherever you go, but these ones will just stand still. The third monster that doesn't seem that deadly at first but can actually kill you instantly are the three monsters. They have high damage, but also they explode when they're about to die and this explosion can one hit kill you. Also keep in mind that most bosses in this event have this one hit kill skills. So you have to take note when they're about to do it. Another thing about the three monsters that is annoying is they drop a well pool on the floor upon dying. Now this well pool is kind of popular I believe and it deals massive damage continuously as long as you're on it. I think I take about 3.5 million health of damage and it's normally not supposed to be that insane but because your stats are reduced, your health is also reduced. It's, it's annoying man. Stay away from these monsters when you're about to kill them. Another thing to keep in mind is some bosses regenerate their health. Now if you don't deal as much damage to them or don't deal any damage at all, there are some bosses in this event that will actually start regaining their health. So keep an eye out for this. Speaking about regenerating health. Always refill your health before using a portal or going to the next location. Sometimes there are monsters waiting right in front of the portal and the battle begins once you appear. Sometimes these monsters will be bosses. So if you don't want to die or waste the life, please fill your health before moving forward. Speaking about dying or life points, <laughs> you do have life points in this event. You have about 5 life points at difficulties 1, 2, 3. And it reduces to 3 or I think 2 life points at difficulties, 4 or 5 and above. You just keep getting less and less life points. 
Now your life point replenishes immediately you complete or successfully complete a dungeon. The problem is if you fail a dungeon due to time out, exhausting your time or your life points running out, you will lose an attempt for that particular difficulty and you only have 5 attempts in a week to challenge each difficulty. Although your attempt will reset every Monday and if you do complete a dungeon or a difficulty, your attempt will reset back to 5 and you can continue trying with your 5 attempts in the next difficulty. This is where raid, the raid function that I've mentioned earlier comes in helpful because you can just complete it in a couple of seconds without the risk of you losing any of your attempt or life or even time in this event. And that's all I found out for now about this event. If I learn more stuff in the future, I might make another video or just post it in the community section. So please <laughs> check that out once in a while guys, as I do post important information there before actually making videos about stuff. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to always get notified when I release new content. Also, if you enjoyed this video or if this was insightful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up, it really helps the channel out. Again, if there's anything I missed or if there's anything I didn't mention, you can also just leave them down in the comment section as it will be helpful to both me and other people that watch the video. Thank you so much for watching guys and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy guys.